All right, cool. So we're recording this meeting at this point um, on myself, Ian Meyer, and we've got Roll here who we're gonna play through a round of backdoors and breaches. So I actually had to go back if you're watching this now and um, say, hey, do you mind if I record this since it's just you and I? And he was uh, kind enough to say yes. So say hi, Roll, for the people who are gonna see this later. Hey guys, what's up? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through backdoors and breaches using uh, an OBS video setup and um, actually play the game and get familiar with it. So if you've never played it, we're going to talk through the rules. We're going to talk throughout it's played. We're actually going to show it, etc. cetera. Um, and it should be pretty fun. So it, it, I'll be playing the part of the incident master and uh, Ro will be playing the part of the defender. So let's, let's actually take a look at the rules here. So this is backdoors and breaches. Um, it is a card based game. It basically functions this way. You have a deck of 52 cards, just like a, a standard uh, deck of cards, but they're broken up into specific categories. So you have cards for your initial compromise, pivot and escalate, persistence, and C2 and Xfill. You also have injects, things that will come up in the game that sometimes are good and sometimes are bad. They'll sometimes they'll affect, they'll affect you in a bad way, sometimes it'll help you. The defenders in the game get four procedure cards that are written procedures. These are things that they know that they've got very well documented, that they know how to do. And um, what ends up happening is they actually get a bonus for that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Before the game, the incident master chooses four of these cards for one for initial compromise, one for pivot and escalate, uh, one for the persistence and one for C2 and Xfill to tell a story. And then during the game, kind of like D&D or any other sort of like role-playing game, they, they lay out the story to you. And the story plays out over 10 turns. So essentially what ends up happening is over 10 turns, you have the ability to ask questions to say, um, the, the, well, the, the incident master will give you more information. They will say, this is what's going on. They tell you a little bit more of the story to, to fill in gaps with the idea that the four procedures that you've been given, those four procedures that you've been given, um, hopefully one of those will help you discover one of the areas of the compromise that were mentioned, right? Now you have 10 turns to do this in. If you don't discover all four things in those 10 turns, um, you know, the, the attackers win, the defenders lose, it's a bad day, it, you know, incident response is called and cyber insurance is, is activated. Um, but if you do, if you do it before the 10 turns, huzzah, you've neutralized the, the compromise and you've been able to go through and stop the event. Now, you heard me say that you will have four cards that you get a plus to. What does that mean? So um, you actually have more procedures that you can use to try and discover the uh, the breach, um, but you have four four that you can that you get a bonus to, and what's what's that bonus? So we've got a, a dice here. Now um, we'll look at we'll look at all this in a minute, but we've got a one d I'm sorry one d twenty, and the idea is this: um, in our first round, um, in our first round here, you will go through and you will say, okay, I want to try and use let's say firewall log review. And I want to try and use that to see if we discover anything that helps us figure out part or gets us one of those four cards. And then you roll a 1D20. Now, if you don't have a 1D20, you can actually go to Google and type in, you know, Google dice roll and you'll get a, a right in the Google page, a, a 1D20 generator. You click on the 1D20 and you hit roll and it randomly rolls it and gives you a number. So if you don't have a 1D20, no problem, you can do that. Now, if you roll a one through 10, if you roll a one through 10, you're done. Uh, means that the, the procedure failed. It means for whatever reason, uh, incident response team came in hungover, the log files weren't there, um, the, you, you, the system that was, uh, that was compromised actually got wiped in, in the process, backups weren't there, whatever it was. So the incident master will come up with a reason why uh, the procedure didn't work, right? Now, let's say you roll a nine right? You roll a nine and now one of the procedures that you used, you said, hey, I want to use firewall log analysis. And that was one of your written procedures, one that you know really, really well. You actually get a plus three. So you roll a nine, you actually get 10, 11, 12, and you pass, right? 
And then what happens is the incident master will tell you if you discovered a card or if you didn't. So this adds a little bit of challenge in that, let's say you roll a card and you fail. That card could have been the one that, that gave you one of these items because each of these items actually has a set of tools or procedures that'll help you discover it. And if you, um, if you get it, great. But if you fail, you don't get to use it. What ends up happening is the card that you got, you turn it and it cannot be reused for four rounds. So early in the game, you know, you want to use those cards that have got those, those advantages because then you might be able to reuse them later in the game because you got to wait till, you know, round five, if you start at one, to reuse that card again. So it has a cool down on it, if, you know, video game mechanics or game mechanics where each round that card turns until it's back facing up again. And you'll see that over here uh, on the board when I show this. So if you do roll and you're successful, you don't have to turn the card. That's, that's how I do the house rules on it, but you don't have to turn the card to say that was successful. We can do it again um, because the process worked and we can do it over and over again until it, until it fails. So it only really does that if it fails. Now, um, other things to be aware of. If you fail on three attempts, you get an inject card, right? So an inject card could be good, it could be bad. Um, it could be something that, oh great, you get another procedure or somebody went to Splunk training and came back and is now really, really good. Um, essentially, um, what ends up happening is that card could even end the game. So the one card that like ends the game is it was a pen test. Everyone, it's fine. Go home. It was a pen test that was approved and, and we didn't, we didn't get it. So that is the long and short. And some of these rules um, I already went through here. So like the, um, uh, the, uh, the four turns that something goes back into play. Um, like I said, I like to play it that if it's successful, you, uh, you get to reuse that card again. Um, one of the other rules, and it's at the very bottom here is when a defender rolls a one, or a natural 20 without any modifiers or unsuccessfully three times. So if you roll a one, a 20, or you roll unsuccessfully three times, that is how you get the, the inject card. So that's the basic gameplay. Um, that'll make sense. Is that what you'd heard? Any questions? Uh, not really. I think I, I'm going to watch the gameplay first do the game right. play yeah that's it. that's that's exactly how it happens yeah. um you go through you watch the game play out you get it and then the next you know next time you're at a conference you got a deck of cards you're like okay i'm gonna teach somebody else so that's exactly how it goes so over here we have our cards laid out right now we're gonna come back to this in a second but as i go through the game i'm actually gonna flip these over as you get them right these are the procedures we're gonna go through what you've got now here's our injects here's our other procedures um Right now, the procedures that you have to work with that give you that, that, that plus three, the procedures you have to work with are server analysis, NetFlow, Zeek Bro, or real-time real uh, intelligence threat analytics Rita, which is one of Black Hills tools. But essentially, you know, NetFlow or Zeek Bro log style analysis, internal network segmentation, and user entity behavior analytics. Now, these cards may help you discover these cards up here. They may not, just, just depends. But um, the other thing to keep in mind though is there's this whole other stack of procedures, which in that link that I sent you uh, should have had a bunch of them, but you've got things like crisis management, network isolation, endpoint analysis, uh, endpoint security protection analysis, firewall log review, and uh, seam log analysis. And I think I'll actually uh, to make this, maybe we can do this this way. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. So now you can actually see those. So these just don't give you a modifier. So if you roll, you've got to get an 11 or higher for those to work because yeah, you're trying it for the first time in the field. So what we'll then do is after each round, I will capture over here what we rolled and notes about it. So what procedure you tried, what, what it is, et cetera. And that way, at any point we can go back and refer to it. Did, did we use this card? Did we not use this card? Um, is it in a cool down state? When did it go into cool down, et cetera. Um, and that's it, right? So I already actually covered with you what procedures you have, but, but here they are on the screen a little bigger 
uh, for you to look at. So you've got server analysis, internal segmentation, uh, NetFlow analysis, and uh, Rita Brozik, and then user behavior uh, entity analysis. So to start the game, at this point, you know everything you're gonna know about the game to get started. To start the game, what I do is I tell you a little story. So we've put together an incident um, using those, those four categories that we talked about before. We put together an incident and this is what's happened. So you are part of an information security team at a large organization that does um, social media, social management, management of big corporate enterprise accounts. Uh, these are the type of companies that are working for brands. And they say, we're gonna manage all your social media, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they start to, to mention that uh, they say, listen, hey, we're giving you a phone call because we're having a lot of problems uh, right now with some of the tools that we use. They're just either not working or they're asking us to authenticate additional times. And it's, it's really affecting our ability to manage these, these brand accounts. And we, and we don't know what's going on, but we're starting to see um, you know, posts that we were supposed to be posting not go through. We're seeing some accounts actually post things that, you know, aren't necessarily bad, but they're, they're, they're not anything that we posted and, and we're not sure what's going on. So they want to call the security team to find out, hey, uh, what is the issue here? What is going on? And is this something we need to be worried about? So that's what you get at the beginning. You've got your four procedures here that you can try. And, uh, or you can try any of the procedures over here. And this is the point where I'd say, you know, what questions do you have? What, what would you like to try? And, and we'll go through round one. Okay. Um, are we able to retrieve logs from, from the server that we are essentially like investigating or like any network and analysis? Yeah, you can assume that any of the procedures that you have are things that you can try. So um, you you absolutely do have server analysis. Um, we'll go over here to the actual cards themselves. We have server analysis here as one of your cards. So yeah, you could go through and say, hey, I, I want to take a look at the servers and see if there's um, if there's anything on there that can help us determine if there's been a, a problem like that. Um, sure. You are kind of limited to these these cards though. Um, right. So yeah, the ability to baseline a system, verify that it's operating in a normal state. By the way, this is more than simply running task manager and looking for evil backdoor.exe. So you're, you're looking to see if there's something strange going on on that server. Okay. Um, I'm probably going to go with NetFlow and NetFlow. With okay. Rita. Yeah. NetFlow with Rita. All right. Very good. Do you have a 1D20 or do you, uh, do you want? Yeah, I have one here online. Perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna trust you. You don't have to share your screen or anything like that. You just tell me what you rolled. Okay, I rolled a four. A four, okay. So four plus three, because you've got this. Um, uh, four plus three there, uh, it's only a seven. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this into that um, cool down position, right? And then we'll tell you uh, what happened. So you, you went through and you tried to go through and pull up the, the logs from uh, from you know NetFlow trying to see traffic analysis, and it turns out up oh, NetFlow was not configured uh, for the segments that those systems are on for whatever reason it was missed, um, and uh, you know for whatever reason it just didn't work. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say okay, let's uh, let's actually there we go. Yeah. So we tried. Uh, Rita, and I was actually say NetFlow, NetFlow, and Rita uh, failed. All right. So that's round one. So now we've got our card over here. It's turned, it's in its cooldown. You cannot use that again until we go all the way around and it's back up right again. Now, one other thing I actually forgot to mention during the rules, um, and it's not a big deal, but uh, if for like, say, say, say that worked and it turns out that NetFlow actually um, will give you, like it's a mitigation for like three of these, the incident master will choose which one they're gonna reveal for you. They're not gonna go, oh great, you found all three. Um, okay. So just, just so you're aware. 
because at the end of the game, if you notice, I'll be like, but wait, that one was successful and you didn't give me the others, that's why. Okay, so we're on to round two. You don't have your, your real logs, you can't use it again. You've still got these other procedures. What would you like to try next since that didn't work? I'm gonna go with server analysis. Server analysis, all right, very good. So go ahead and roll for me. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens. I rolled a 12. 12, okay, very good. So that's a 15. So let's uh, document that down real quick. 15, server analysis, uh, and that worked. So analysis, success. Okay, let me take a look here real quick. Okay, so unfortunately, this is an area where, and just like in security, you can do everything right, but for whatever reason, that didn't discover anything. So server analysis was not a tool that in this particular breach was going to discover uh, the, the issue uh, at hand. So you went through, you did the server analysis, you looked around, everything seems normal. All You went and looked at the operational procedures, the only things that were on there, were um, you know executables that should be running the the, the configurations hadn't changed uh, heck you even looked into fim and said all the executables and binaries haven't changed since this happened uh, it, it just doesn't seem to be anything here the system seems to be operating as designed so at this point you've you've checked netflow now mind you that failed so you, maybe there's something there maybe there isn't you check the servers servers seem fine everything seems okay there what might you try next? Uh, what are my other two that I have? Um, well, you can still use server analysis, but you know okay. that that doesn't show anything. So you probably right. The other two that you have are internal segmentation and user entity behavior analytics. So um, turn it, so internal segmentation, you might turn that on to block C2X filtration okay. or something like that. And that, that, you know, potentially could show you that card. I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying it, it might. And then you have your user behavior analytics, right? So the user behavior analytics, you're looking, hey, this administrator only ever logs in from nine to five and suddenly they're logging in from, you know, Korea at 4 a.m. local time, like that something's, something's amiss here. So it's okay. looking for, does this, be, this user always behave this way or not? Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one, the user behavior analytics. Okay, very good. So user behavior analytics, let's go ahead and roll the dice. I rolled a seven. Seven. So that's a, that unfortunately is a 10. And we'll say user behavior, behavior <laughs> analytics. Uh, I need to make like drop downs for this. That's the next thing I'll do. Uh, failed. So you went in, you um, looked at your UBA, UEBA tools and you, you see some weird stuff, but nothing that makes any sense. Nothing that raises any alarm bells. You're like, well, this, you know, it looks like this could be normal, uh, but it might not be because it, it seems like, again, uh, we're not getting the full picture. Um, for whatever reason, administrative actions are not being logged. Um, for whatever reason, uh, some of the systems that are considered in scope don't have the agents to do the user, uh, user behavior analytics on the systems. Um, for whatever reason, you, you can tell you're not getting the full picture. So your um, UEBA, we're gonna turn that, that is now in a cooldown state. So keep in mind, any of these that are in a cooldown state, oh, and we have to go through and turn, uh, we did that one and then two. So um, your UEBA and your NetFlow, you can go back and, and use those again once they're upright because it's not that there wasn't anything there, it's that the procedure didn't work. It didn't give you a full picture. So we are now on to turn four. Um, you don't know much more at this point because you had one success and two failures. Uh, you've still got internal right. segmentation you can try or you can try one of these over here. 
Okay. Um, what options do I have on the drop downs on the right hand side? Sure. Hold. On. Give me one second here. I'll go over to you. Want? Oh, over here. Okay. Hold on. Um, you have. Let me go to procedures here. So um, the the cards that you don't have, you you don't have. Uh, can you see that firewall review up there now? Yep, I can see it. Okay, cool, perfect. So firewall log review is one of them that you that you have available. You could review the the firewall logs and see um, if you're seeing any sort of traffic uh, moving across. You can use isolation. You can actually you know take the systems that you think are uh, potentially behaving poorly and isolate them. Uh, you have UBA we talked about. You have endpoint analysis. You can actually, instead of looking at the server side, you can go look at the actual user endpoints and look at log files and see if there's anything there. Uh, we already talked about the Zeke and Bro. Crisis management. You can bring in the legal team, legal team and management teams uh, to try and figure out if there's something they need to do from a, a PR perspective. Um, you've got your SIEM analysis. Uh, so going through and digging through the log files there, seeing if there's anything that correlates. Uh, internal segmentation we talked about, endpoint protection analysis, we talked about that one, right? No, no, endpoint protection analysis. So now you're looking at things like uh, AV. You know, you're looking, does it have malware? And you know quite a bit about AV, probably more than I ever will. Um, but uh, the, uh, you know, so you know what that does. Um, server analysis we talked about, and there we go, we're back again. So those are the ones that you have uh, available to you. Uh, I'm going to go with endpoint analysis. Endpoint analysis. All right, very good. So endpoint analysis, go ahead and roll. Uh, 14. 14, excellent. You definitely discovered uh, something, and I am going to, we're going to do um, this one. So we're going to give you your pivot and escalate. So pivot and escalate. Uh, let's go through and actually show that here. So pivot, uh, pivot cards. There we go. So, oh, I wasn't. In, I'm sorry. Got the wrong thing there. Um, one second. I'll change it out. Uh, properties. I don't know how I got internal password there. I'll do this just real quick. Uh, take this out. And which pivot and escalate was it? Local priv. Yep. So local priv. I apologize. I thought I had this already prepped. Uh, there we go. So local privilege, privilege escalation. Um, the attacker used a vulnerability in the local software to gain administrative access. Now, keeping in mind, it doesn't state what that vulnerability is. So don't always assume that the vulnerability that exploited the software is strictly a bug. It could be anything. It could be social engineering. It could be uh, any number of things. So the additional detail you get at this point is, all right, so now you know that something is acting strange and you also know that someone has gotten access to privileges that they shouldn't have. Um, you don't know how they got them and you don't know what they're gonna do with them, but you do know after looking through log files and analyzing the environment, um, you do know through endpoint analysis that now there's somebody actually escalating privileges. You know that it is actually a security problem. And what did you say you got a 14, I think it was 14? Yep, 14. Cool, so endpoint analysis. Cool. All right. So we are on to turn five. We are going to take our NetFlow card. That'll be back in action here next round. And now that you have that additional information that it is a security event, somebody is escalating privilege, uh, what is it that you would like to try? Um, let's see here. Let's go with um, let me go with internal segmentation. Internal segmentation. Cool, cool, cool. All right, give me one second here, and we will go through and refresh in. Right, just checking on something here real quick. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. 
cool. All right, so you wanna try internal segmentation. So we are in here, that is one of our plus three cards uh, that you can try. And uh, go ahead and roll for me. Tell me, uh, tell me what you get. Okay, I rolled a 12. Very good, so success. I'm gonna learn a spell someday. It's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. Um, so let's go back to our uh, cards from time. There we go. So you rolled 12, very good. So we've got our 12 and let's take a look. You had internal segmentation successful. I'm looking at the incident again, nothing. So you go in and you take a look at uh, the firewalls internally to the environment. You take a look to say, is anything communicating back and forth in an unapproved way? That's not. Everything that's communicating is communicating in an approved, well-architected, well-designed, the only things that are supposed to be talking to are what's talking to each other. So the internal segmentation that you implemented, that you did to, to the environment, whatever is happening is happening over approved channels. Um, so you weren't able to segment the system down to the point uh, that it actually blocked whatever is actually happening. So you were, you were successful, but it, it didn't actually get you anywhere for the breach. So uh, we're moving on to step six. Your um, NetFlow analysis is back in play. Your user behavior analytics will come back next round. What would you like to try next? Um, can I take a look at the cards on the right again? Yeah, absolutely. So let me go back over here and we'll go to procedures. Um, you have, uh, you already have server, uh, server analysis. You also have firewall log review available. Uh, you have isolation available. This is isolating um, the, um, the, the systems that you believe are infected further. Uh, you have, uh, that's one of your uh, cards you have. You have the endpoint analysis, which was successful for you before. Now, something worth mentioning, and this isn't a hint, but remember your endpoint analysis was successful. The incident master is only gonna show you one card whenever it's successful. That doesn't mean that this same card would not reveal um, other cards up there if you were successful with it again. Um, you've got your NetFlow, we talked about that. You've got crisis management. You've got your seam log analysis, uh, internal segmentation we just did, uh, endpoint security protection analysis, AV, uh, server analysis you've got up there and there we go. So those are your available cards. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with endpoint analysis again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and roll and tell me, uh, tell me what you get there. So I got an eight this time. An eight, um, that doesn't get you where you need to be. Um, so we are gonna go through and we're gonna, up, we're gonna put the roll in there. So eight, that is unfortunately a failure this time. Uh, and point analysis, gonna learn spell someday, maybe type. Very good, so endpoint. Analysis eight. All right, so uh, you ran endpoint analysis again and it just didn't turn up any results. You saw the same results that you saw before. You were able to see the privilege escalation, but you didn't spot anything new. You didn't see anything that was different. You didn't have any new ideas. Um, it just it just didn't show you anything. So, um, you know, you for whatever reason, yeah, it didn't work. So um, we're gonna take endpoint analysis. We're gonna bring it over here. We're also gonna put it in a turn state now since it failed. Um, and then we go to the next round. So we're in round seven here. Um, at this point, your uh, user entity behavior analytics, UEBA is back and that had failed uh, the first time. Doesn't mean that it wouldn't have discovered something, um, but it failed the first time. So you can, you can try that again, or you can try any of the other cards uh, that are uh, pointing up at this point. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, sim logs and sim logs. Okay. let me see what I roll. Okay. So I rolled 11. 11, so that passes, very good. Um, so we will go through and we'll bring this down here. That's not gonna turn. Sim logs, show me sim logs. Now, unfortunately, again, you go through and you look at the sim logs and everything looks right. 
So servers are behaving normally, communication is behaving normally, the people that are logging in are logging in at normal times. Something isn't right, but you can't spot it and you don't know why. Uh, you know something's going wrong, you know someone's using privilege they shouldn't, you can still see that because that's all feeding into your sim as well, but there's no other correlation rules firing. The, whoever's doing this um, seems like, you know, they have full control of the environment, but you're not seeing any anything else. So um, the, the correlation rules in sim kind of trying to say, hey, which of these logs fit together for a problem? They're, they're not there. So unfortunately that did not work. Okay, um, let's see. Well, what did you roll that time, I'm sorry? I rolled a 11. 11, okay, so we'll put that in. Seam, logs, and that was failed, unfortunately. All right. All right, so we are now on to turn eight. Uh, our endpoint analysis will turn back there, and um, we are ready to go through and try whatever your next, uh, your next attempt is. Uh, I'm gonna check the firewall logs. Firewall logs, okay. Um, all right, so check the firewall logs. Okay, so firewall logs, that is a, you know, you don't get any pluses to that. What'd you roll? Rolled a seven. A seven, okay. So that's that's not gonna help you either. You're not you're not having good luck with the dice. Today. Yeah. Um, so that's, but that's okay, that happens. And that happens in incidents, right? Like there's some times where just you beat your head against a wall and you just can't figure out why why it's not going. So um, let's go back here. You rolled seven. We're, we're, uh, we're getting to the point here where it's like, okay, so here's the other problem. So you went and rolled a firewall, firewall logs, failed. What else is this? This is one, two, three failures. So now we get to pull an inject card. And the way I want to do that is I will, I'll let you pick. So I'm just going to move my finger over this and you tell me when to, actually, let me fan this out a little bit better. There we go. You just tell me when to stop. There you go. That one? Yep. Okay. Let's see what we get. You got honeypots deployed. So um, with our honeypots, uh, what did I do with the inject cards here? Here we go, inject cards. So actually let me, eh, it's not like you can't see all the injects because you never know which one you're gonna get. If you had a deck, you would have already looked at them. So let's pull this up. What was it, honeypots deployed? There we go. So you got honeypots deployed. Um, the defender had honeypots on their network. The incident master has to show their pivot and escalate card. But, so this was a good one. Problem is, is we already we already showed our pivot and escalate card. Oh. Yeah, so unfortunately that it doesn't, it doesn't help. That would have been a great card to get. Um, and I'll tell you something at the end, which which kind of sucks, but that's just the way, the way that the cookie unfortunately crumbles. <laughs> so um, uh, let's make a note here that uh, inject, um, inject honey pots deployed. All right, so we have two more turns here, honeypots deployed. Um, we'll go through here and let's go back to our cards. So we got our cards now, we've got our honeypots deployed over here. Uh, we, we have our one piece that we're ready with. Our, um, our endpoint analysis turns around, so it'll be back next round, your last round, uh, if you wanted to use that card again. You are still uh, all of your plus threes are available to you. Um, your one plus three that you've tried once, uh, failed once, you could certainly try it again if you, if you wanted to. Um, what would you like to do with your next turn? Uh, let me use, let's see here. Um, I'm gonna go with a firewall log review. Firewall log review. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right. And what uh what did you roll? Roll day fifteen. A fifteen, excellent. So, there we go. Fifteen. Firewall log review. 
It was the same one you did last time, isn't it? Um, I think it was the one that I did was um, internal segmentation. Oh, it was internal segmentation. Sorry. I put firewall logs the first time. I was like, wait, no, that's not right. I just want to make sure I keep an accurate thing there so I can tell the story at the end. Um, in internal segmentation you did up at round five, though. What was it? Hmm. It was internal segmentation? Let me make sure. Give me one yeah. second. Let's say I thought you did um, firewall log review last time. Did I do it? I thought so. Yeah, I think but, you did. Why don't you choose a different one? I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a. I'll, I'll even give you a reroll. Okay. Um, uh, or, or you know what? You rolled a fifteen. Choose okay. a different card. Let me go with. Um, let's see here. What's funny is we're recording this, so I could go back and be like, "I'm a terrible incident master," um, but that's I okay. See it it's supposed to just be fun. The... Let's do. Endpoint Here, I can make this bigger for you. Protection analysis. Endpoint security protection analysis. All right. So endpoint security protection analysis. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. So endpoint security protection analysis. So let me write that down. We're going to keep your role um, because uh, you did uh, you did you did well there. So we'll just keep that. And come on. Endpoint, sorry, endpoint security success. All right, so good news there. So you used endpoint protection analysis and you found the persistence. So what was persistence? Wait a minute, new users were added. So why didn't that show up in the logs? That's weird. Um, new users were added to the environment. So suddenly now you're starting to understand why things are acting a little strange. Somebody is going in, they've, they've got additional privilege they shouldn't have. New users were added to the environment and those users are doing things that they shouldn't do with that privilege that they shouldn't have. The question is, is how did they get that privilege in the first place? and what do they intend on doing with it? So you've got unfortunately one move left to try and uh, to try and get this. So I, I think there is a scenario where you could still get there. Um, and that scenario would be, you'd have to roll a one or a 20, you'd have to get an inject. That inject would have to reveal a card but I don't think you get to roll again. But I, you know, I get to I get to play the game, so I might let you roll again just to see if you can pull it out. Mm -hmm. um, so let's uh, go ahead and choose what your final move is. Um, so we'll go back to cards here, um, and I can pull up the the procedures as well. Let me move this over. So here's your your cards. I think your end. So everything is back in play for you. Your endpoint analysis is back in play. Right now, you have everything available to you. So whatever you want to try, you can try. Okay, I'm going to, since I detected new users, I'm going to use the uh, behavior analytics for the users. Okay, user behavior analytics. Very good. Uh, let me see what I roll here. Oh, I rolled a seven. Oh, so close too, because that's when you get a plus three on. So you got a 10. You were one point shy. So you go through, unfortunately, you're, you're beating your head against this user behavior analytics um, and you're beating your head against it and you, 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 you're like, there's gotta be something here, but nothing else shows up. And unfortunately, um, unfortunately in your 10 rounds, you, you didn't get there. Now, um, you did a great job though, um, because usually this is played with a, a larger group of people, right? And you kind of bounce ideas off of each other and you talk right. things through and uh, a lot of people start metagaming. Um, when you do actually get a deck, you'll realize there's some metagaming that you can do to be like, okay, wait, you know, all the potential compromises in here um, can only be solved by this card, the ones that are left. So we're, we're just going to hammer this card un until we get it. Um, 
so let's break down this scenario for you. So let me go back and we'll go to the uh, the cards here in the turn. So uh, actually, let me go to the cards and, and reveal what happened. So what happened, this was inspired by the Twitter breach over the uh, last couple days here. So the real issue was an insider threat. You had a malcontent employee um, that actually had administrative access and was upset uh, for whatever reason. In this particular scenario, I think what I painted out was they thought they deserved a promotion to a, um, a senior analyst and somebody else got it and they decided they were going to move on anyway. So they're going to have some fun in the environment while they do it, cause a little, a little bit of chaos. They knew that they could escalate local privilege uh, inside the environment because frankly they're an insider they can go through and actually change the privileges that people have and what they did was they went through and they did the new user edition so they could go through and create actual real users that wouldn't show up as anything out of the ordinary so that's the reason when your when your pieces failed on some ones that you rolled successful on was because this was an insider all the environment was operating as designed. They were using the actual inside infrastructure to go through and do this uh, kind of chaotic stuff to it. In the end, their goal was to go through and start modifying posts and doing a lot like what we saw here. So I treat this HTTPS as exfil a little bit liberally. The, the thing that they were exfilling out of the environment was social media posts to go through and say, oh, you know, this is, you know, like the Bitcoin scam we saw. And then also what we're hearing about downloading DMs and pulling private data out. So a lot of these social media firms when they're managing this stuff have complaints um, things that people have called in saying, oh, this food was bad, or I found a rat in a restaurant, or, uh, you know, I was at uh, your, um, your place of business and someone was incredibly, you know, rude or, or worse, you know, and they want this information to go through and, and kind of say, well, I didn't get my promotion, so I'm going to get all this dirty laundry uh, from this environment and exfil it out over HTTPS. And then once I quit, I'm going to post all this stuff and, you know, make these companies look bad. So the, the thing that I was going to tell you is this one, you'll notice um, if we actually look at local privilege escalation, endpoint security analysis. Um, uh, yeah, was, wait, did, wait, hold on. Did you do endpoint security analysis? Yeah. Endpoint security, endpoint, endpoint, oh, you know what? Because it says, it says endpoint security protection analysis. That's the last one you did, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that one got you one of two. That oh no, that's the one we got that one. You didn't get that one. Yeah, you had yeah, that's right. You got the new user added. That's right. So you got that one. You didn't get this one. So look at the ones that are here. So HTTP is Xfil. Had you gotten that Rita card, which you failed on, you would have gotten this one. You would have seen okay. that in, in NetFlow logs. You would have seen, well, wait a minute. They're doing something. They're they're sending that data out. They're downloading the DMs. They're doing whatever it is. Right. Um, you got new user added and you got local privacy. You didn't get the insider threat. This is the one where um, the uh, the user uh, behavior analysis that you kept hammering on. So it's like okay, user behavior failed failed where you kept going back to that and you just couldn't get the the role that got you there. That yeah. would have gotten you this. Yeah. Okay. So you you were that's what it's I was I was hinting even though I was saying I might not be hinting. I was like that failed, but you might want to keep beating on that because right. what you would have ended up finding is like, well, wait a minute, this guy's an administrator, but he's doing way more stuff than he generally does. Like, is he working on a new project or is this related to this local privilege escalation that we've seen? Right. So that's it. I mean, that's essentially the game. You go through and, and it's it's quick, especially once you play it, you just have to come up with some scenarios. And it's just kind of fun to sit and uh, talk through uh, with folks and kind of, you know, make up silly scenarios and this, that, and the other. So um, what did you think? I'm just kind of curious. I liked it. I thought it was interesting. It mm -hmm. definitely gives you, uh, helps you, especially with a company or a corporation mm -hmm. that you have um, when you're needed to do like a SERP, for example. Mm -hmm. Definitely something it would be something to play with uh with your team mm -hmm. um especially like setting up um a plan and a playbook that you want to go through yeah absolutely no and that's i mean john talks about that a lot of folks talk about because you can just sit down and i think it was jason blanchard who was saying um 
um, he sat down and J Jason will say all the time, he's like, listen, I, I, I know a lot of security people. I'm not a security person. He's like, I'm a marketing person. I work for SANS. I did this. And, he, and he's, you know, probably the smartest security marketing person that you'll find because he's absorbed so much of it over the years. Um, and uh, he said, you know, I'm going through these things. And I'm trying to make up these scenarios. And the CIO is sitting in front of him playing the game. He's like, oh, we don't. Oh, yeah, we don't have that. Oh, yeah. Like, and it was it sent them back with ideas that they're like, I need to go ask my folks, like, what are we doing about this? What are we doing about that? And it just kind of gets the mind lubricated, if you will, you know, to say like, Oh, this is, this is what's going on. And, and uh, we can, we can do all of it. So yeah, no, we're going to, uh, one of the guys that works for me got uh, a card deck as well. So uh, right as he ordered it is when it was like, all right, we're working from home. But uh, I, I think now that I, I'm, this rig seemed to work out pretty well. Um, and, uh, you know, I, actually what, what you don't see here, actually I can probably show you at this point, what you don't see here in the um, in the rig setup, I'm gonna take this out of its little harness here, there we go, is I've got two decks of cards. Um, I've been to multiple Black Hills conferences, so I, I got them with my, my thing, but I've got one deck here. And then I also have a deck down here, there's my dogs out there, a uh, deck down here that actually had the cards laid out so that only I could see them to know what, you know, these are your four procedures, this is this, this is that. So, yeah, no, yeah, I think that uh, that worked out pretty well from a, an operator. And I appreciate you kind of playing along because it was is, is much for me as anything because uh, I want to run more of these. And this lets me know, it's like, oh yeah, the, the rig works and, and uh, makes it easier. So cool. Yeah, definitely something that I feel a lot of companies need, especially like a monthly mm -hmm. exercise with your team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that would definitely, I think, go a long way. So cool, man. No, I mean, um, you know, uh, the kind of meetup, quote unquote, is, is wrapping up. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording at this point. Again, thank you for, you know, I, I kind of sprung that on you since it was just you and I to say, well, oh, let's no record problem. this and then I can I can share it. So thank you for that. And then uh, I'm going to share this with the, the Black Hills team and say like, hey, here's us running through a game with this thing virtually. Uh, this is how it works, et cetera. So awesome, man. So I'll stop recording. Um, if you're watching this later, um, thank you for watching through it. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully you're inspired to pick up a pack and play with folks and, and just kind of talk through these problems and learn more about it. So uh, definitely go on to Amazon, pick up a pack of cards and just play, see how it goes. You, you might come up with some new ideas. So excellent. Uh, we'll go through.